good afternoon uh, i am going to talk on the uh, topic which is known to everyone and i am sure again uh, there may be lot many experts here who could have uh, talked about the topic in a better way than me uh, however this this topic is directly related to the uh, assignment which has been given to me at national institute of aerobatic stress management baramati so uh, when we talk about climate there may be a lot many skeptics when we talk about drought probably we may not get many skeptics at this topic is really not that pleasant for farmers so that outline that uh, um, my talk has is uh, drought in the past institution involved in dealing with uh, uh, drought drought stress management strategy challenges opportunities and a way forward its overview so i thought uh, i should start with a good uh, note here and i found a, uh, a good slide from department of agriculture and cooperation where it is clearly defined that drought is a condition of moisture deficit sufficient to have an adverse effect on vegetation animals and man or a sizable area there are optimistic note also Cont country has experienced that drought can be prevented a drought can be mitigated hardships can be minimized sufferings can be reduced if we all work together let us see some of the data taking into consideration that uh, there were 24 large droughts in between 1891 to 2012 and there were more incidences of drought in between 1891 uh, 1920 1965 1990 and 1999 2012 that is the concern so this is the slide i i tried to compare the crop production in a year with the previous year and the in the drought year with the previous year it gives a kind of uh, clear uh, idea that how the drought affected and uh, which were the most severe droughts everyone knows and uh, knows and in the morning uh, there was a mention about two th 2002 drought where there was a uh, uh, lot of reduction in crop production i tried to compare 2002 drought with 2012 drought which is also considered as a severe drought so if you compare the in the 2002 drought there was almost 12% reduction in crop production and 2012 drought though it was severe it was not that much that is for the cereal grains and just i did the exercise for other crops also core cereals pulses total food grains all seeds cotton sugar cane so almost in all crops except a couple of them the effect of drought was not that much visible at when we consider it as a national level that didn't mean that uh, the it was not uh, that severe drought <coughs> if you look into the figure cumulative percent departure of rainfall negative throughout the rainy season with greater deficit in the first part of the season i am talking about 2012 drought ranged from 5.5% to 42.3% deficit during the critical month of july critical growth period of the crop so these all data from again uh, <coughs> national rain fed authority <coughs> then again most affected states were as usual maharashtra karnataka gujarat rajasthan and there was impact on ground water extraction and the cost of extraction also lowering of submersible pump by 3 to 4 meters replacing of low hp motors with higher hp excessive consumption of electricity and diesels because even the storage of water in the major dams and all it was very low shortfall in area was in only in the karif season that i got from again uh, nra data was minus 9.94% so still we could we could uh, manage that th those data indicate that uh, we could manage the recent drought 
though they were as severe as that of 2002, and the credit should go to the institutional setup. This slide shows how the drought was plan, uh, drought management was planned, and they are, they are the milestones. And uh, very important to know the recent one, that is uh, rain-fed area priority index to identify the drought-prone areas at block level. Uh, recently, uh, National Disaster Management Authority has come out with the drought uh, management plan. And the document is based on so many institutes associated drought management that I have listed here to give you an idea about the institutional setup and how it has evolved. So there are government of India, central government, state governments, and then there are some nodal centers, there are institute, research institutes. There are some of the institute which have recently come up for predicting the, uh, uh, the uh, crop damage or uh, predicting uh, about itself. So again, uh, this slide is from uh, NDMA, how the drought management strategy has been formulated for information for decision making policies and institution assessment, communication, and then management options, and to take the uh, decision. So here, there are some strong points and there are some weak points, particularly with respect to the management option. We all talk about the crisis management, not the preparedness for the drought. So probably that part has to be strengthened, and research institutes have to play a lot of role there. So having said that, having given credit to all this institutional setup, not all is well. <coughs> when we look at national level, it was okay. When we went to the actually affected areas for survey, then the situation was really uh, very bad. So agriculture production in drought prone areas like Aurangabad division was severely affected. The loss in Rabi crops ranged from 54 to 70%. That is not reflected by national level figures. So horticulture crops were also severely affected. Some of the dry land horticultural crops, they were all totally damaged in a small division of that Aurangabad in Maharashtra. So out of 20,733, 532 Orchards were totally damaged and 11,712 were affected. And there was some <coughs> crisis management uh, uh, action was taken, but still they could not save some of the crops. And uh, livestock shelters were there for every almost uh, 30, 40 kilometers. And then uh, cattle were fed with sugar cane, which was also damaged due to the drought. And there were some uh, plants, there were some fault and lacunis in management of this type of thing, though government provided a uh, lot of support. So, for example, uh, all the farmers, they, they brought their livestock, that cattle, into these uh, sheds. But uh, uh, the term was, they should be there, at least one of the member from the family they should stay there in that uh, uh, cattle shelter. So one thing is like that's the bread and butter of them and even they cannot go out for earning. That was the situation. Some of these things, some are to be streamlined. So doubt stress management, the challenges that's what I listed was, again, everyone knows about it. The food production needs to be doubled by 2050 with no area expansion in agriculture, declining productivity of land, no or less impact on environment, less water for agriculture due to population growth, expansion of industries, and climate change. Even without climate change, there can be drought-like situations. Millennium ecosystem assessment projects, a doubling of domestic water withdrawals in sub-Saharan Africa, and a 20% to 90% increase in Asia between 1990s and the mid 21st centuries. So there will be a tough competition for water and the availability of water and the quality water for agriculture, that will be an issue. Managing drought, that's a time of precipitation. So that 
is again like to be streamlined. Contingency plans that have been like a, a big issue and many of the farmers, they are not taking care of it. After use, many of the plastic pieces, they are getting incorporated in the soil. That's what I observed in many of the farmers who are adopting this technology. Or they have to burn it. Again, that is an issue. So opportunities, all the time we said that we are talking at national level, at mega environment level, we don't have a clear idea of micro environment or a small environment, which is different than other one with respect to drought and its impact. So now NRSC, ISRO, they have come out with the system to use remote sensing and meteorological data together and to assess and to give real time situation what exactly happening in small unit of agricultural land. And this is now managed by <coughs> uh, National uh, Crop for Forecast Center. The other development which has recently taken place is character prioritizing drought prone areas even at block levels and all based on natural resource index and integrated livelihood index. Maybe tomorrow there may be a elaborated talk on this one by Dr. Venkateshwar Lu. Then 161 districts, the top one, and that is the third among 419, uh, one third of the 400, 499 as prioritized districts have been identified. And all that uh, system, what are the limitations that we know. And uh, other thing is the national watershed projects. A lot of work has been done. Now we have to make best use of all this investment. <coughs> then interesting thing is uh, increase in private investment. It was there, uh, it was uh, driven by profit, but now uh, if you look into the literature, many of the uh, private firms, they are investing in uh, these abiotic stress area, including the drought also. They are coming out with the technologies for <coughs> conservation and also genetic improvement. There are many. And advances in science in molecular biology, now recently phenomics tools to understand the response of plants in real time <coughs> and in a large scale. Bioinformatics, conservation agriculture, technologies to mitigate stress like growth regulators, phytohormones and all, they are in place. We can assess the response of the plant to drought or water limitation with uh, higher precision now by using uh, technologies like infrared imaging systems. We can say which one can respond, which genotype can respond to the irrigation, which will not, which can survive, which can keep their canopy cool. So the way forward what need to be done. So problem identification and prioritization that has to be fine tuned convergence of existing technologies to match the need because we know now the environment with greater precision, generation of need based viable technologies using the holistic farming system approach, on farm assessment and evaluation, refinement of technologies if necessary and ensuring timely availability of inputs. So this is like what enhancing productivity of crop in rain fed. One example that sorghum that I have picked up, there are some <coughs> dry areas where the performance is better, maybe because of management or soil, but in some places it is very, very poor as indicated by <coughs> this graph. And then right commodities at right time and right place in cluster of years covering drought period. So that's very important because only one year, one enterprise will not serve the purpose. Scientific intervention to induce flowering and fruiting when desired. Focus on goal, goal to manage drought, then the charity. Sometimes these uh, uh, cattle shelters and all, they are uh, project that is, a, they, they give scope for charity. And there are uh, chances to bring in some of the wild species of crop plants they ca which can survive drought. That work is also going on and we also have to explore some of the already existing drought tolerant plants and they are important from some other point of <coughs> view for medicine and all. And there is, there is a need of market for progress. It is not, not for profit. So, so can dry land crop fetch more premium? Some policies and all can we bring in to support dry land farming and profit for the farmers? 
then conservation agriculture so water saving technologies then the fertilizer use if the fertilizer has been already applied to the land and that is not going to be used because of drought or water stress can it be used for next crop how to do that one those things can be studied other issues that is technologies for dryland horticulture crops there are many but that they, they have not reached to the farmers then forage for big animals <laughs> then again the augmenting contribution of unsung lots of land that's what i tell these people even there were seri uh, very severe drought very severe crisis of water they were moving around and they were doing their own business can we like uh, bring in this one as a part of agriculture economy in a big way then sharing task ensuring synergy as you have seen lot many institutes are there for management and research what is needed is the synergy and sharing of the task so institute for basic research at center they can focus on basic strategic and anticipatory research while state universities state agriculture institutes and all they can look into the how that uh, knowledge can be utilized then the <coughs> private sector and all and again the cg institute uh, we have put lot of investment and uh, uh, energy <coughs> intellect uh, that already lot of knowledge has been accumulated what we have to like go for is proof of concept product development validation of technologies on shelf so national institute of urbanic uh, stress management that's the recent institute that established in 2009 unique in the sense that it is dealing with all the urbanic stresses and uh, kind of <coughs> system approach either excess or deficit not only in crops but also in other commodities like livestock fish and all the idea is to come out with management strategies and also <coughs> train uh, the young generation for this management so it is again the multidisciplinary and the strategy is to enhance uh, clarity of target environments identifying developing adaptation option mitigation options policy support center for education and platform for research work so the outlook finally is institutions well evolved for management of stress synergies can make great impact to learn manage and recover techniques for predictions are more robust if not perfect so technologies available they are on shelf they need validation because one or the other reason private companies have shelved them they have to be validated then they need reorientation then e friendly water saving technologies should be given priority thank you very much